Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Healing and Thriving Summit. I am your host, Petek Tatle Miller. We have an amazing speaker today as well, uh, Dr. Evelyn Decker. So she's going to share with us her expert opinion on how to communicate our sexual desires, needs, and boundaries to feel safe and gain control of our sexuality. I'm going to read her bio, and then we're going to start with our interview. So Dr. Evelyn Decker, she is a board certified integrative and holistic family physician who specializes in sexual health and consent. Her unique approach to wellness incorpora incorporates pleasure as an important aspect for healing trauma and illness. In addition to practicing medicine, she was the executive director of Sex Positive Portland from 2018 to 2020. She teaches other healthcare providers on sex positivity, destigmatizing STIs, and having a more open attitude toward alternative sexual practices and relationship styles. In addition, she holds workshops on consent and sexual communication geared toward young adults to help reduce sex, sexual assault on college campuses. Hello, hello, Dr. Evelyn, and welcome to the summit. Welcome. Uh, thank you. It's so honored to be here. All right. So I read your bio, but I would love to hear from you also who you are and what you do. Oh, good. I am uh, Dr. Evelyn Decker, and I am a board certified family physician who specializes um, kind of a more integrative sex positive approach to to whole person health and pleasure. I also am a community leader, as well as a consent educator and sexual health educator. Uh, I specialize in pretty much destigmatizing sexuality in general and STIs in particular as well. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's start. Um, you know, individuals, I also had this condition. Uh, individuals with vaginismus uh, most commonly don't feel comfortable in bed because of the difficult emotions. And these difficult emotions are uh, something like feeling, um, something like guiltiness or shame or, or feeling broken or less of a woman. So it is really hard uh, to deal with those emotions. And those emotions leave them um might lead them let's say to be disconnected from their uh sexuality or sensuality uh, so communicating our sexual needs and desires is such an important topic but before we get there i would love to talk about how to be aware of our sexual needs and desires what are the ways to be much more aware of them and what are the what can be the potential needs and desires uh to inspire um the individuals with vaginismus yeah, you know, I think one of the first aspects of sexuality that we tend to forget is that sexuality is ours. It belongs in our body and it belongs to us. And it allows, we're the ones who get to define what it means to us versus this idea that sex and sexuality belongs to another person. And it's an act that we do with another person. So when we come to like really understand our desires, the first place to go into is our own body and to figure out what we like. And it doesn't always have to center around penetration of our vaginal canal. So I think a lot of women and a lot of us in general really think like, oh my gosh, the ultimate sex act is about penetration of my vaginal canal. And really, it could be so much, we could take steps backward and understand that like, the first place of sexuality actually comes within us and our feeling safe within our body. And then going in that direction, like understanding and feeling like, what is it that I truly want? What is it that I truly desire? And for a lot of people, even if it's even without any condition, it, sexual penetration may not be what they actually desire. And thinking that that's okay, 
It's okay for us to be in our body. It's okay for us. Maybe the thing that we desire the most is just to be slowly caressed around our hands or our feet and understanding like what, or another is like, maybe what we desire is touching another person and touching their skin versus like always centering sex around intercourse and penetration. Um, you know, desire is a really big, a big thing. And we're, and, and so many people, especially because I teach this, I teach people to say, what turns them on? What is it that they want? Um, a lot of times when I ask that question to a group of, of, of people who are raised as women, they don't even know what turns them on because they're so told that what they're supposed to do is only be turned on for the act of penetration. And I have had many women of all different ages just start crying when they start thinking, oh my God, I get to decide what I want. I get to figure out what it is that my body wants. And it doesn't have to be to please my other, to please my partner. Mm, mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is the thing that I want? It's really an important question that we get to ask ourselves, right? So um most of the time I also um also also can can you also talk a little bit about boundaries because mm -hmm. I you know um as as women with vaginismus specifically uh, most commonly what's happening is that that the the the, the story is playing at the background uh, during intimacy like also before intimacy like out of intimacy there's a fear of losing the partner because of like because of this condition what if he leaves me or what am I going to do if he leaves me how am I going to find another person with this condition so there's a belief kind of um that um um that that uh that they owe their partners in a way because of the opinion that they cannot satisfy their partners completely. So in that circumstance, how can they build confidence in setting boundaries and saying no to particular positions, for instance? Uh, how do we come to that confident place to protect our boundaries and feel safe? Yeah, so this, you know, I believe in having community, starting communication patterns and discussions way before you get intimate, before clothes come off, to develop a place of safety and co-create a place where we could learn how to communicate our boundaries as well as our desires. So I have a framework that I teach people, and this is a way of setting up co-creating a container with your partner so that when there's certain places and areas where you have to say I can't go there or that's not feeling good or can we try something different it's easier to say those things without having our partners feel it's about them or worry about hurting each other's feelings because I think that really developing boundaries in a communication style will help avoid that place where you feel oh my gosh i'm gonna lose them i'm scared that they're not going to hear what i have to say or because i can't please them mm -hmm. you know then they might they might reject you but learning about all the different ways of pleasure and all the different ways of communicating before intimacy i think is very key and one of the i developed this framework that i call stars and having a stars talk is is a really good place to start those communication patterns so that when you're in a intimate situation with your partner they could hear you when you say that doesn't feel good for my body right now it's not about you it's about me and since we're doing a, a, and in this relationship and in this intimacy as a partnership or together, we could find ways of co-creating a pleasure place that feels safe for us. So the STARS talk is a way of creating that safer space. And STARS is just an acronym that sounds for five things that I really think that 
are important for us to understand about ourselves and to communicate with others. And that one is our sexual health. So, you know, at the beginning, like I have this condition, it's very painful for me to, to have insertion. Um, it's not about you. It's something that, you know, I have been struggling with or, or working with and learning my body and trying to move through. So that would be the first S, which is our sexual health. Also, um, STI status is part of that S. The second one is our turn ons. Like, what turns me on? It's like, what turns me on would be like, I really like touching my partner's body. I like touching my partner's body softly. I like to be touched softly. I like to start with you touching places that aren't necessarily thought of sexual and touching it in a way where you can feel how my body responds to your touch. And let's learn how to to, to just start there, you know, and this is what I need. To, so, you know, there's a lot of different things that people, I'm just picking one turn on. Um, the, ne uh, one, the next one is the A, which is avoid, which is boundaries. And I see boundaries not as a no and not as like a wall, but boundaries are that wonderful space that exists between me and you that allows us to move, that allows us to go deeper, that allows us to expand. So boundaries are like, it may, maybe a boundary would be like, um, I need you to just be very gentle and touch my vulva outside and like with cup it with your hand and allow me to like feel into that into that safety of your hand before we even go into a place of like having to do any sexual penetration. So like that could be a really like for example, a boundary that you start with so that you can move into intimacy. So it's not like no, no penetration, but like starting slowly and allowing, allowing that. The next uh, letter is the R, which is your relationship intentions and your expectations. Like my intention with you is to get into an intimate space where we can have uh, intercourse and penetration that would be satisfying for both me and you. It's not just about the partner. I mean, it's also about us. And then my expectation is, is that when I'm in a place where I don't feel comfortable or I'm having pain, that I could say it to you. I could say, oh, this hurts, or I need to stop, or we need to like take a breath. And, or to say like, maybe we need to move into a different activity where I could share this intimacy with you. So like having, saying that way in the beginning and creating that. And then the last S, which actually may be the most important one. And it may be one that you start with versus end with is safety, is your safety needs. What is it do you need to feel safe in your body? in your psyche, in your emotional place, in your physical space, in your cultural space, in your, in your spiritual, you know, space. So it's all about creating a safe, co-creating a safety place that you could sit in. Because I think we all know that intercourse and sex is not just about a physical act. It's about a safety act. It's about allowing someone into that space where it has that holds trauma and pain and 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 tightness and all of this it's about really co-creating a place within ourselves that we can go into and feel safe and heard where we have a voice we our desires and our pleasures where we could speak our boundaries and those places that can't be entered at that time and where we could actually prioritize our sexual health with our partners Wow. <laughs> Such a nice talk. Um, I had a lot of questions while we were talking, but I dropped my pen and I didn't want to <laughs> lose. <laughs> but okay, uh, so you touched to a very good point uh, when you were talking about communication. But you get to do this communication before getting intimacy, right? Getting intimate with your partner, like... Mm -hmm. um, when I say this and that, it means this and that maybe, right? Because in, in, in my situation, for instance, it was so important to know that when I say stop or pause, that my partner is going to stop. I shouldn't think of, oh, if, he, if he's going to stop or not, I shouldn't be worried about this. So it was so important for me to tell 
him this. And also, if my partner didn't know what vaginismus was about, telling it and uh, like being very open that I was not able to allow him in between, in, in between, it, the position even in between my legs. So it was important for me to see that he was okay with this. So when you talk about safety, it was so safe for me to talk all these details beforehand. Uh, so it was so good to, to, to uh, address this, uh, actually. Thank you. And um, feeling safe is a huge part of it, for sure. <laughs> so transitioning. I would love to talk a little bit about transitioning from, um, from using dilators to actual penetrative sex. Um, it can be very, very challenging for many uh, women with vaginismus. You know, they can dilate with the largest size dilator very comfortably, but when it comes to the penis, even if the penis size is smaller than the dilator, it can be very uh, painful or it might be impossible. So, uh, what would you what would you say about this? It's it's uh, of course the outcome of this situation is physically, but I don't think that it is a physical related thing, right? And what would you say about this? What um, might be the uh, potential reasons for it? Well, I think a lot. You know, a dilator is just something that you hold and you're in control of. Like we're in control of the dilator. We're in control of the speed of the texture. We're in control of the size. We're in control of stopping or allowing without feeling like we're hurting somebody's feelings, right? We're doing it just for us. When there is a person attached, when a person has a penis and the body part is going into it, that's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of fear of trust, of like re-entering into that space of that where if there's a trauma, having that trauma come back and really feeling safe in that. So how does one transition from a, using a dilator and being like, yay, I got it. I got the largest size. Now I could just go into bed with my partner. You know, again, that, that takes, there's more than just a dilator in size. There's this heart connection, right? There's this this connection of the mind with the partner and slowing down, taking breaths. Like I really think starting it by breathing together and feeling like you're in a place where you are just even in breath together and you could sense you could create that sense of boundary and yes. And, and and this is also, of course, like having had that stars talk, having had those talks with your partner throughout your relationship, not just in the beginning, but like where they know you. And you may have already done some very like, you know, almost like a, a central massage where they could feel your body relax, where they could feel that you're in that place of safety. So co-creating a safe container. Sometimes, sometimes with partners, I do a kind of like a little bubble exercise. And for me, it's like sitting down and taking a break. And then um, my speaker keeps wanting to come off. I'm taking a breath and then creating a container, like a physical container. Like we do this like bubble, you know, and, and create like, say, this is my intention during in this bubble. This is my desire in this bubble that creates in this bubble. And now we're in here. And that allows us to make it a sacred space and transitioning to attempting, you know, penetration, creating a sacred space with each other, creating an intention, creating an expectation. Like, I hope I can have penetration. We could try and let's move slowly into that. Then as you know, you move into like maybe starting with a sensual massage of just some coconut oil and then like really having holding space of the vulva, feeling your partner's energy in their hand and seeing if he feels safe in that. And you may not, and it may be, that's it. That's all you do, right? It may take multiple times of just like creating that safe space before even just a finger 
just and like the more your partner can understand your muscles and understand what it's saying like really understand what that vulva and the enteroidus the vagina is saying until it's saying come in come here so it's like an invitation like your partner needs to understand that going into you it has to be an invitation from you versus somebody just barreling in and going in because that will just create again a lot of the muscles the trauma the nervous system without calming this nervous system without going into the whole idea that you're connected throughout your body it's not going to be it's not going to allow that opening of receptive of being able to perceive, regardless of whatever dilator is in there or has been in there. It has to be a reception. It has to be a welcoming. And mm -hmm. through that welcoming, you know, it was moving slowly. And then oftentimes, like when I'm in this container afterward, I'll be like, okay, let's open, let's pop the container. Let's move out, out of it. So that you have a, so you've created a sacred space of it. Mm -hmm. So, so when you, uh, can you give, um, can you um, tell a little bit about this bubble? So you do it physically yeah. uh, with the hands. Yeah. And you're telling that this is my intention and this is my desire, yes. my need, and the the partner is doing the same as well. So mm -hmm. you're both in the same bubble and sharing it and doing maybe a couple of breath work together and feeling that sacred place. Is that correct? How I understand? Yeah, yeah. So what so the way we do it, I usually like set up my space, it may have candles or just be the lighting like I make it I make my space into a sacred space. And I, I personally, my bedroom is a sacred space for that. So when I, I sit with my partner, and we're just sitting across from each other, we may be in a position of um, where I may be on top, and they're holding me, but we're clothed, we're, we're totally clothed. And we're, we're looking each other's eyes and we're taking, we take like maybe three breaths together. You know, we'll say this, I'll talk about it before. Like we'll take three breaths together. And then um, one of us will share our intentions and our desires and our boundaries. So my intention is to try to move into a sexual space where I could feel safe and welcome you into my body. Thank and you. My um, desire is to, you know, let's say it's this first one, like just to see and if my body could feel the warmth of your hand and maybe we could have some genital to genital touch, but next time we'll decide trying penetration, but like just to feel like our bodies connect. And my boundary is at this time to have no genital penetration, like nothing at the start. Or maybe it is, maybe that is what you want to go. But like starting slowly. So then they tell your their boundaries and then you do a bubble. And let's see if I could show it. It's kind of like this. And then you go this way. Again, like with the and the other person's doing the same thing. So I go to my right around us, my left around us and then all around us and then we end up with like a hug around each other oh, beautiful i just had goosebumps so it's beautiful wow i'm gonna try this for sure <laughs> yeah. it creates so much trust though in that moment there's no rush and there's a lot of sharings and feeling also amazing okay thanks for this and uh, I, yeah and i think i think with vaginismus especially like that is so critical it's like again it's going into that safe co-creating that safe space because that safe space has been broken and your body is now creating the safe space by by the muscles and the nervous system so then to allow that opening really is it's important to be intentional wow yeah you're so true so lastly i would like to ask you dr Evelyn, um how can we come to the place uh where we prioritize our needs i'm not talking about being selfish here but you know uh, how can we value our needs uh in bed in and in in life in general and i want to give a very quick example to this <laughs> While living with this condition, I was dating with a guy and it was, you know, we were hanging out uh, for a couple of times and he invited me to his house and I was like, okay, 
I can do it maybe. I can have penetrative sex maybe, you know. And then I, I went to his uh, house and we got, we started to get intimate and he wanted to get, you know, he wanted to squeeze in between my legs. And I was immediately in that, um, I, I, I pushed him away and I said, no, I, I have vaginism. So I communicated with him in that specific moment, not before and not having that kind of safety, nothing actually. And I didn't know him well, by the way. And he told me, and he said, uh, I, I said that I had, I had vaginismus and he said, what it is about? And I gave, you know, explanation at that very moment, which was very tiring though. And anyways, long story short, he said to me, oh, Patek, penetration is 70% of a relationship. <laughs> I said, wow, <laughs> penetrative sex is 70% of relationship. So there was a... It, there was no other information kind of in my mind. So I accepted it. And uh, I had to sleep in his house because it was so much out of the city. I couldn't go. I couldn't walk to the public stations, whatever. And he didn't even offer me breakfast. So he really mistreated me. And I had to leave his house uh, in the morning. And the only thing, this is the strangest part, not the others, but this is coming right now. The only thing that I was thinking at the moment that I deserved it. I didn't think that he mistreated me at all. I deserved that kind of behavior. So that was how I was valuing myself. You know, I deserved, because of this condition, I deserved to be treated this way. So in that situation, <laughs> what would you recommend to a woman uh, who are devaluing themselves? who are uh, not prioritizing their needs, who are not um, uh, prioritizing themselves in life as well. What would you say? Yeah. Wow, that's big. I mean, that's, that's such a big cultural baggage, right? I think that as women, we're raised to care for others, to put other people first, to not recognize that we ourselves are important. It's almost like, you know, you put when the airplane they always say you put the oxygen on mask first right that's not selfish because without taking care of yourself without putting on the oxygen mask first how could you possibly take care of anybody else so this whole concept of selfishness really doesn't belong in this idea of valuing ourselves like he was very selfish saying hey I'm you're here for sex and that's all the, the, the important thing. And if you can't give me that, then that then you're then you're not worth it. And then we take that in because we've been brought up thinking, oh, we're supposed to care for somebody else. So my my big answer to that is understand the stars talk, really understand this concept, because the whole concept is about valuing yourself. The whole concept is that your sexual health matters. It's part of your whole person health. It's part of your mental health. Like sexual health is part of who we are and our sexual desires matter and our boundaries matter and our intentions and our expectations matter and our safety needs, they really matter. And it's not selfish at all. So, you know, I do go back to these five elements because there are five elements that we're not taught to matter. And we're taught all about sexual education. And, and when somebody says 70%, like if you were to have even a brief conversation before you said yes to go into his house and, and he said, well, 70% of, of relationships is sex, then you could sit down and be like, is that the kind of person that I want to be involved with? Is that the kind of person that, that, my, I, that deserves me? Because, hey, I know that I'm valuable. And I know that for me, maybe intercourse is 5% of a relationship. I mean, it could be whatever you want it to be. For some people, it could be 70%. But if that's if it's not a match there, then that just helps you avoid all those uncomfortable situations. And uncomfortable situations that may actually just exacerbate the trauma. Because what we're trying to do with vaginismus is feel safe. And this is our body telling us when we're not safe. And so having a conversation and learning those things beforehand and 
make it sure that you feel safe even before you get to a place where you might have to take your clothes off. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Wow. It was such a beautiful talk. Thank you very much, Dr. Evelyn. And lastly, what is your gift uh, to the audiences who listen to you right now? Yeah. So I have a workbook on the stars talk like i have a free workbook that you could go and, and download and the, the link will be shared and it's a it's almost like it's a fillable pdf that may help you think about all these things like they may help you think about oh yeah that's a boundary oh yes that's something i'm curious about so it's a bit of a questionnaire it's not you know there's it's very inclusive so there's a lot of different things that you could explore in this workbook. Um, and it's free because I really believe that we need to learn this stuff about ourselves and, sh and share this conversation with other people. So it's called The Stars Talk. Okay, amazing. All right, the link will be shared. Thank you, thank you very much for being a part of this summit and sharing your valuable knowledge with us. You're welcome and thank you so much for allowing me to to talk with everybody and I hope it was helpful and more power and love to you on your journey of healing. Oh, thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.